Welcome to the Combat Athlete Physio YouTube channel where we take human movement science and we bring it to the combat sports. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the underlying anatomy and biomechanics between the two competing styles of Terrence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez. All right, so this first clip of Alvarez is really gonna be more of kind of like a biomechanically conceptual conversation rather than more anatomically driven like the next clip of Alvarez we'll look at. But the main thing I want you to notice here is whenever he, uh, pay attention to his feet. Okay, so we're going to just go through it a little bit quicker and then we'll watch kind of what his feet and his hips are doing uh, in a little bit slower. Okay, so he closes distance here, right, uses the left to maintain distance, another right, and then a left to the body. Now, you'll notice that whenever, as soon as he closes distance, his feet don't move at all. Okay, so he's got that really nice bladed stance. Okay, it's not too long, it's not too wide. It's a really good centering of his, his center of balance here. And so whenever he throws that right, he simply just shifts his center of mass or over to the left side. And so now that his center of mass is shifted to the left, he's able to kind of deliver a little bit more of a powerful punch with the right. And so that whenever that lands, he resettles, keeps distance. You'd see a lot of different boxers kind of back up and re-enter here maybe, but Canelo Alvarez knows that he's really good at this distance, so he stays here. Maintains his distance, keeps him at the tip of the glove, and then he shifts his hips again for a right, which isn't super powerful, but since that one wasn't super powerful, his hips stay in a position that allow him to switch him and throw that left to the body in a really powerful way. Even though it was blocked, it was still a pretty powerful punch. But really the concept I want you to kind of understand is that you don't really have to be kind of bouncing around and moving like we see, we'll see with Terrence Crawford a little bit later whenever you're trying to maintain distance and throw effective punches. Okay, so we'll watch it one more time. When he closes distance, his feet really don't move, but you see a lot of hip switching and kind of that center of mass shifting from foot to foot. So with that straight, or that, that right hook, distance, right, and left. Just a lot of subtle hip shifting that you'll see, and I want you to keep an eye out for that whenever he's fighting Terrence Crawford. This next clip is probably my favorite clip of the whole video to watch because this is just a picturesque version of how energy is transferred during an uppercut from the ground all the way through the extremity in the hand whenever we're whenever Alvarez is throwing this uppercut. I've broken down another uppercut from Alvarez. I'll link that in the description if you want to go fight it. We just looked at the uppercut or Alvarez's uppercut in that video. But this is, I kind of wish I had used this clip or found this clip and used this instead because this was just picturesque. So we're going to start from where his right foot is pushing off and what it's doing when he transfers his weight over to the left foot. So whenever he straightens his leg out there and kind of pushes off the ground, he's doing this movement that we talk about a lot in athletic movement called triple extension in the lower extremity of the legs. So he's plantar flexing, or ankle extension is actually called plantar flexion. I know that's confusing, but that's just kind of how it is. So he's plantar flexing with muscles like the gastroc and the soleus. He's also extending the knee with muscles like the quadriceps. And then he's extending the hips with muscles like the glute max and the, the hamstrings. And what he's also doing, though, he's doing another, I mean, obviously all movements are triplanar, moving, their along, moving along three planes of movement. And a plane of movement is just kind of this imaginary thin surface that our body moves through. If you want to know more about that or really about any of this type of stuff, I've got a free biomechanics course that's been fully released now. It'll be linked in the description below if you want to go check it out. It talks about all of the movements that I go through every joint in the body and look at the planes of movement. I look at the axes of rotation and how it kind of plays a role in the combat sports. So go check that out if you like or want to learn more about those things. So after this triple extension movement, he's actually doing something a little extra, if you will, in the hip. It's called external rotation. So those deep external rotators of the hip along with help from the glute max is, is what's allowing him to get this much external rotation. Okay. So now as he's doing that with the right leg, let's shift our attention to Alvarez's left leg. As he accepts the weight on that left leg and starts to turn, you can see his knee extending, but the more important thing that I like to look at is hip movement. Okay, so as he extends with his extends and actually rotates with his right, his foot, if you notice, does not rotate over to the left. So he's not rotating there, which means consequently he's got to have a lot of hip internal rotation on the opposite side to allow for this amount of trunk rotation, which we'll look at in a second. So just a really clear display of hip internal rotation being at, having the mobility, one, and then being able to access it in a sporting environment as chaotic as, as fighting, uh, or chaotic as boxing, is super impressive. 
Okay, so we've got really good mobility and an example of the triple extension at the bottom or all the way through the legs and the hips. Let's talk about the trunk. We'll notice with these rear arm punches, a lot of times the trunk moves in unison. Okay, so if we were to take the plane of the hips and the plane of the shoulders, they would be moving almost in unison as they rotate. Uh, we'll see that it's a little bit different whenever we see uh, Terrence Crawford style here in a second. But whenever they move in unison like this, it really is kind of dependent upon how much hip mobility you have. And since he has a lot of hip mobility, that lumbosacral spine and the thoracolumbar spine, or just where the thoracic spine, the mid-back, meets the low back, which meets the sacral spine, or where the sacrum is down here just above the butt crack, you take you get a lot of that rotation as the shoulders are rotating as well. And once you get a ton of that rotation and it stops like it does here, the rest of the movement happens at the scapula or the scapulothoracic joint. And so right here, a movement called scapular protraction, or which is a component, scapular abduction if we're going to be specific. Since the scapula is moving away from the spine, a muscle like the serratus anterior is highly involved in this, it's a component of scapular protraction or as it kind of moves along the thorax of the body or around that rib cage to help deliver that upper extremity that we know is so important whenever we're striking, particularly whenever we're, in bo whenever we're boxing. So as it protracts and helps bring, you can see how it's all working in unison. Okay, so we've got that rotation of the trunk, that the, the scapula is moving out away to help deliver the arm. We've got a really nice shoulder flexion and elbow flexion. So shoulder flexion is just moving the arm forward. Muscles like the anterior delt and the pec major are doing this. And while that's happening, the elbow is slightly flexed isometrically, which just means the bicep is producing force, but it's not shortening. Okay, so that happens, and then he's got a nice isometric clinch. And it lands. It doesn't land as well as it could have. But we just we see that that seamless and almost effortless delivery and effective transference of, of energy through the lower extremities, through the trunk, and out of the upper extremity. And so these are the things that I'm going to be watching for that I hope you guys are watching for uh, whenever they meet up this weekend. All right, so when it comes to Terrence Crawford, we're going to look at this view against Benavidez Jr., all right, so you'll notice that his stance here is really wide. This blitz of punches, he's got that really wide stance, which we see like kind of like in Mike Tyson that he does a lot of small stepping and he keeps his stance wide so that he can shift his hips for more power, particularly with hooks. And so we see these kind of wide sweeping hooks being thrown here and he's got Benavidez Jr. up against the ropes. So I know it's, a, it's okay to be a little bit more or a little bit less defensive, like he's not really covering up here very much, but what I really want you to notice is whenever you've got a really quick and powerful mover like Terrence Crawford, it really just takes one punch here. And so this right at the very end doesn't really catch in the way that you would like to see your rights catch. Okay, so it, his, his glove is above his shoulder and it doesn't really seem like it's connecting in a way that's as effective as it could have been. However, a contributing factor and at least one of the contributing factors to why this may not have looked as picturesque as a right hook can look, um, but it was still pretty effective. Well, one was because he dropped his, Benavidez Jr. dropped his left and he hit him and he wasn't defended. But number two, whenever you have a really quick and powerful athlete like Terrence Crawford, you have to be careful of really any punch. So any punch can land and be dangerous. In Terrence Crawford's case, is because of something called the stretch reflex in this situation. So what do I mean by that? I want you to pay attention to his hips, and we're going to look at a different view of this in a second so it's easier to see. But watch his hips and watch his shoulders. You're going to see a separation. If you were to draw a line from hip to hip and shoulder to shoulder, you're going to see a separation of those two lines whenever he starts to rotate. Okay, so he rotates back, and when he throws his hips forward, look how far back his shoulder is than where his hips are. So his hips are in relatively the same position. They're facing right at Benavidez Jr. But his shoulders are kind of facing over to the right here. Almost if we were to get straight behind him, it'd be almost close to this where the rope is or meeting the corner of the ring. So what that does is it puts a ton of tension on two muscle groups. One is the external oblique on the side of the arm of this throwing the punch. And two is the pec major in the anterior delt. They're, those are muscles in the, end, or the front of the shoulder girdle that assist with a movement at the shoulder called horizontal adduction, which is essentially what he's doing whenever he's throwing this hook. Now, he's a little bit of an internal rotation moment because his elbow is so bent and it's lower than his wrist, 
but it's mainly horizontal adduction. And so the stretch reflex happens whenever muscles elongate eccentrically, right? So they're producing force, they're just getting longer. Then they switch from eccentric to concentric. So when he, when he winds up, this is what winding up is doing. Winding up is taking advantage of the stretch reflex. He winds up, the external oblique does contralateral rotation. So it rotates the body to the opposite side that it's on. And so you, he's rotating now to the right. So he's putting stretch on that anterior, he's putting stretch on that external oblique, he's putting stretch on the pec major and the anterior delt. And then when it switches from that eccentric to the concentric, it creates a more powerful concentric contraction and punch. And so then it lands and knocks Benavidez Jr. further into the ropes. Okay, so let's look at another angle. All right, so this is the other angle, and I'm going to pause it right there. Okay, so just look at how far that shoulder is lagging behind his hips. You can almost not even see the letters on the front of his shorts. But his chest and his shoulders, again, if you were to draw a line there, it's actually facing kind of to the right over here by the ropes again. And so you can see that as he brings and winds that arm back, this is a really good view. Okay, so his hips are down, his shoulders closed down. As he brings his arm back, big stretch put on the pec major. You can actually see it since Terrence Crawford is so lean. Look at his pec and look at the big muscle on the front of the shoulder. You can see how stretched out they get there. And it's hard to see the external oblique, but I will have, if I haven't by now, I will have shown a picture of that on the Human Anatomy Atlas app so you can kind of better visualize it. But as he rears back, that eccentric is changing from the eccentric to the concentric. It's a phase called the amortization phase. I've actually done a whole video on the stretch reflex. I'll also link that in the description. And then it becomes a much more powerful punch, even though it's not a picturesque right hook. This is what Canelo Alvarez is going to need to watch out for. I mean, he can strike at any moment. He's so quick and so powerful, and he's so dynamic. It's really, it's going to be really hard to manage the distance in the way that he's been able to do in the past. So these are some of the things I want you guys to watch out for. Uh, let me know in the comments who you think is going to win. I'm not going to make a prediction here. I, I don't make predictions on this channel. I just like to look at the science behind the movement. But let me know your predictions. Let me know if you like breakdowns like this. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.